Okay, let's close the eyes and we'll find a nice comfortable sitting posture. Any, any asana that's natural for you. Keeping the spine, tall and vertical spine with the head, neck, trunk in alignment. Gently feel the lengthening of the spine. Pull the neck up, tailbone down. You need to make any adjustments to your posture so you can feel very relaxed. No strain should be felt. Allow the hands to rest very comfortably on the knees or thighs. Let's lift the shoulders up toward the ears, roll them back, let them hang loose. <clears throat> A few gentle neck movements, you can do up and down movement, side to side, just feel the neck muscles and try to soften any subtle tightness there circular movements or whatever feels comfortable for you. Finally, we'll bring the head back to the center with the chin slightly below the horizontal level. Soften the facial muscles and relax the jaws. <clears throat> Begin to watch your breath now as you breathe in and out. Just maintaining awareness at the tip of the nose, just follow the flow. Also becoming aware of the subtle sensation of cooling in the nostrils when you inhale, warmth when you exhale. Becoming aware of your breathing rhythm, how the breath flows through the nostrils and how it feels in the nostrils. We'll now recite OM three times, deep inhalation. Open the eyes softly now. Stay and welcome. Welcome to our journey together. This is day number nine. nine. <laughs> day number nine of this brief journey together, but continuing on for the remaining part of your life. To get there. 
Okay. Let's do our eye exercise. Again, the circular rotation of the eyes. Keep the head in the center, spine up, look up to the ceiling, and then move the eyes in a full circle, large circle, clockwise rotation. Smooth and continuous movement. Make an effort to stretch the eyes as you go along this full 360 degree rotation. Keeping the head perfectly steady in the center. Exercising the muscles of the eyes. Keeping the eyes strong and healthy. Nicely lubricated. Next time you bring the eyes to the top, center the eyes and close. Just last for a brief moment. <clears throat> <clears throat> the eyes, look up counterclockwise, full circle in the other direction, smooth movement of the eyes. But make an effort to stretch the eyes, so make a large circle. Simple movements, but very effective in maintaining good, healthy eyes. Preventing dryness, preventing any kind of itchy, Itchiness, etc. Next time you bring the eyes to the top, center the eyes, close and rub the palms. <coughs> Cover the eyes softly. Check to rub the eyelids and the eyebrows. Central massage. Around the eyes. You just light massage so we can soften the facial area. Just release the hands and once again softly open the eyes. So let's look at our <clears throat> yoga sutras. Remember, we, we introduced the concept of the eight limbs of yoga yesterday. I hope everyone remembers that. Let's see if we can bring it up. Not hold on a second. Give me a moment. It's coming in the screen. I know, <clears> but <throat> I need to share it with the folks online. Okay, I can do it now. Oh, I see. It's here. Okay. All right. So, what Patanjali says that we we talked about it yesterday. Look by the by the practice of these limbs of yoga. What did he say? What happens? Does anybody remember what happened when you practice these eight limbs of yoga? The sutra that we did yesterday. 
What happens? Anybody remember? Anybody care? <laughs> Cleansing the mind. Say that again. Cleansing the mind with six or, or eight. Uh... Uh, sure, I speak that uh, over again. No, it's basically cleansing the mind. Cleansing the mind. That's right. I missed the first word that you said. Very good. Yeah. That's what happens. Cleansing the mind. And because we are able to cleanse the mind, what happens after that? The, <clears throat> the word used was jnana dittihi. Jnana is the true wisdom, true knowledge. Deepti is light. So the light of true wisdom can be seen at that point. That's the whole point. It cannot be seen normally because our mind is so cluttered with all the garbage that we have. We have no access to that true intuitive wisdom. When that happens, then it leads to eventually to, to self-realization, understanding who I am. So here are, is the list of the eight limbs of yoga. We're not going to go into any kind of depth or detailed detail discussion, but just the listing here. So the first one is yama, then niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, Dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. Now, what do these mean? Yamas and nima, there are five each actually, and we'll, we'll go through five each, maybe today or maybe some other time. So, if there are five yamas and five nima. Yamas are more like guidelines how to interact socially with others. Okay? And there are concepts like never telling a lie to anybody, not hurting anybody, etc., etc., you know. Uh, we'll talk about those, Satya, Hinsa, Brahmacharya, and all that. Okay, those are the five yamas. And niyamas are apply to yourself. You know, keep keep the whole body and mind clean. You know, things like that. Be very content with who you, what you are, what you have. All those things are called niyamas. Yamas and niyamas, five each. So total ten. Okay, and then asana is the Sitting posture. So you know, I'm sitting like this. That's my asana. Okay. Asana also means the, the, the mat that I'm sitting on. If you sit in a chair, the chair becomes your asana. So the posture that you're in, as well as what you're sitting on, that's asana. Okay. And of course, Patanjali, uh, <laughs> his goal was to, to teach meditation, right? He didn't have any, he did not introduce any things like the the Surya Namaskara practice of warrior pose or this pose or that pose, you know, none of that. All he said was sit down, do some pranayama, and then do some meditation. That's it. That's the only way to calm the mind eventually. So asana is sitting posture. Of course, as things have evolved now, we know people have devised other postures and all that, but instead of giving it a new name, they said we'll call everything asana, you know. Even though asana literally means a sitting posture only, okay, it doesn't mean anything else. But it's been extended now. So standing inward, everything is asana. Pranayama, I hope everyone knows what that is. <laughs> okay. And pratyahara is the sense withdrawal. Pratyahara means you, you can withdraw the senses so that they are not influenced. So the mind is not influenced by anything coming from the five senses. Okay? That's Pratyahara. And the last three, the three uh, limbs, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi, they are the three stages of meditation in a sense. Okay? We talked about that the first day. Dharana is the initial focus. And then Dhyana is actual meditation in in my own approach, I have been teaching mantra meditation. So we need to pick a mantra and then practice that. And samadhi is the final state where the mind becomes so deeply focused on whatever your object of meditation is that it doesn't feel or doesn't get distracted. So you're deeply absorbed in that whole concept of, of your oneness with the object. Okay? That's called samadhi. So these are kind of stages of meditation, dharana, 
dhyana and samadhi. All right. So when we have time, we'll talk more about these things. If you don't have time, I strongly urge you to, to read Yoga Sutras. All right. Oh, hello, Subhashi. Is there any book uh, rec you recommend for like initial reading or something? Well, there are many, many books. So obviously, as you can imagine, there are multiple commentators, multiple authors who have written texts on these. There's a ton of them available. <laughs> I mean, I'll start with my own blog. I have a blog on Yoga Sutras. But there, the text by, <clears throat> there is a text by Swami Sachidananda. At a, at a beginner level, it's a good text to get you started. Swami Sachidananda. That's the name of the teacher, you know, where, where I did my training at, at Yogaville. <clears throat> and Swami Sachidananda is the one who started that Yogaville organization. Right? And he wrote this text on, on the Yoga Sutras. It's a good beginner's text. It gives you some basic ideas of what sutras are. But once you have understood the very basic concepts and you want to go deeper, then of course you have to <clears throat> that you have to graduate from that text and go into other texts. But this doesn't this text doesn't go into any depth. It's a okay. very nice introduction, but at a superficial level. Okay, but it's good to get started. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. But then later on, you have to go to other texts for deeper understanding. <clears throat> okay, so let's get ready and start with some stretching. Come up on your hands and knees. Marjara Asana. Like I mentioned, Marjara is essentially word for a male cat. If you like female cats, you can do Marjari Asana. That's the name. Keep the hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, spread the fingers wide as you inhale, head up, tailbone up, dip the navel down, exhale, round the spine, lower the chin down, lift the navel up, nice hump in the spine. Couple more. <clears throat> Slow, deep, ujjayi breaths. Synchronize the movements with your breath. Finish the next round. Finish the exhalation. Spine back to the neutral position. And now, like we did the other day, you know, we'll take two more very deep breaths, but then the end of exhalation, we will hold the breath and apply all the three bandhas in this position, okay? But after inhalation, no, no holding of the breath, only after exhalation. So first inhale, create a little arch, then deep exhalation, and then hold the breath, apply the three bandhas. Do this movement twice. Finally, whenever you're done, spine back to the neutral position and we'll sit up on the heels in Vajrasana if comfortable. As always, it's a recommended pose, but only if you're comfortable in it. All right, we're going to get started with some Kapala Bhati. Always start with that cleansing, energizing practice. Let's see. <clears throat> 
Uh, I'm going to keep the speed at 80 breaths today. We've been kind of graduating higher to higher speeds. So we started with 70, then 75 for a few days. Try 80 today. Okay, let's get started. We'll do the full Bandha sequence after this. The final sequence, inhale and then forcefully exhale, eliminate all the air, apply the bandhas when you're able to hold the breath or as long as you're able to hold the breath. Ujjayi sound, if you can. I know you have most nasal problem, but see if you can make Ujjayi. When you exhale or inhale, sound comes from the base of your throat. Okay? All right. So, let's get ready for some stretching. And today, um, you know, we'll do some stretching for the core area. Remember when we do the relaxation, before we do the relaxation, we get into the boat pose. And I'm sure you understand that, you know, it really helps strengthen the core area. So today let's do just a few more uh, from the boat pose itself, a variation to strengthen the core area. All right. So <clears throat> give it a try, see how that works. All right, let's Lay down on the back. Working on strengthening the core section. Lie right. down on the back first. Relax for a moment. Let's do a few rounds of the Pavan Muktasana or the wind releasing pose as it's called. We'll start with the right leg for the right knee and hold the shin with the hands. Hold the shin. Now, Inhale here. As you exhale, lift the head up. Lower the chin down. Guide the knee toward the forehead. Chin, head up. Guide the knee to the forehead. And as you inhale, bring the head back to the floor. Next time, exhale. Lift the head up. And then hold the breath here. Again. Hold the breath, apply the bandhas right here. Bring the knee closer and closer to the forehead. And finally, while inhaling, release the head down. And relax for a moment, stretch the leg straight. Pause. Switch sides. Hold the left knee, hold the chin with the hands. Inhale here. As you exhale, lift the head up, lower the chin down to the chest, guiding it to the forehead. 
Inhale, bring the head back to the floor. Pause. We'll do one more time, but this time as you exhale, lift the head up, but hold the breath while you finish the exhalation. Apply the three bandhas right here. Knee coming in close to the forehead. And whenever you're ready, when you inhale, release the head down. Relax for a moment. We'll repeat these two with the both the legs out to hold the bend the knees, wrap the arms around the knees, hug the knees to your chest for a moment. And now inhale here as you exhale, head up. Chin down to the chest, guide the knees to the forehead, and bring the head down when you inhale. Pause, take an extra breath. And again, the same repetition. As you exhale, lift the head up, chin down, but hold the breath at, at the end of exhalation. Apply the bandhas. Bring the knees closer to the forehead. And slowly release. Come down and relax for a moment now. Take the legs. Take few easy breaths. These are the movements which will help you strengthen the core area. Okay, let's sit up on the elbows now. On the elbows, come up. Now, this is a variation of the boat pose that we are going to do. And there are two options here. One is to bring the legs up into a half boat, supported boat, you can call it, because we are resting our body on the elbows. Oh, no, this may not work for everybody. If this doesn't work, you can bring the feet down and go through these movements, okay? So the movements will be as you inhale, right leg, bring it to a vertical position. Right leg, up vertical. Right leg, right leg. Start with the right leg. Vertical. As you exhale, bring the leg down. Pause. Inhale, left leg up, vertical. Fully vertical, point the toes down. Down, towards you. No, no, point the toes back towards you. Exhale, bring the leg down. Next inhale, look both the legs up. Pull up, vertical, point the toes back down towards you, heels pushed away. Exhale, back to the boat. If comfortable, otherwise feet are down. We repeat it one more time. Inhale, right leg up, point the toes downwards. Exhale, leg down. Slow movement, slow breathing. Inhale, left leg up, vertical. Exhale, down. Inhale, both the legs up, vertical. Stay there now. Keep the legs up, vertical. Push the heels away toward the ceiling. Pull the toes down towards you. Stay there for a few moments here. Strengthening the entire core structure here. And now very slowly release everything down, legs down, head down, and relax there for a moment now. And once again, <clears throat> bend the knees, wrap the arms around the knees, hug the knees to your chest, Stay there for a moment. We're just going to roll the body side to side for a few moments, few rolls, all the way to the right side, roll the body to the left. Just do two or three movements like this. Rolling body sideways. Okay. 
And next time you are back to the center, pause. Mm -hmm. And then begin to rock the body up and down now. Rocking chair move. All the way up, all the way down. Do it a few times. And finally, come back up the way. Sitting position. Just relax. That's our effort to strengthen our this whole area. Belly, spine, waist area, everything strengthened. All right. Yes. Course, strong core is very helpful. When you do more asana practice, pranayama practices, strong core helps. All right. Okay. Let's move on to our Practice of pranayama. More pranayama. Two more rounds of kapalabhati. You always do that. <coughs> okay, let's get ready. We do the same speed of 80 breaths per minute. Let's get ready. We do the bantha sequence at the end. And then sequence now, inhale and then forcefully exhale. And then when you have no more air in the lungs, hold the breath, apply the bandhas. Natural rhythm of breathing for a few moments after you're done with the whole sequence. Ready? One more cycle.
sequence to read. One sequence, again, exhaling forcefully. Apply the three bandhas while you're able to maintain kumbhaka, breath retention. <laughs> Get back to your natural rhythm of breathing. Kapalabhati. As I mentioned, Kapalabhati is a practice which is mentioned under the category of Six, it's called Shat Karma. The, the, the term they have used in the text is Shat Karma. Shat means six. Karma simply means activities or actions. So six actions. They don't use the, the term cleansing there, but every commentator says it's for it's for cleansing. Okay. Kapal Bhati. As I mentioned, Bhastrika is listed under the category of Pranayam. So let's do one round of Bhastrika with the arms thrown up and down, and one more round with the with Bhastrika through one nostril. We'll do that. Okay, so first start with the same rhythm that we always do. So this is the starting position. And remember, you throw the arms up nice forcefully and throw them down forcefully. But both the inhale and exhale are forced and short, not long breaths. You should hear the same sound through inhale and exhale. Let's start. Inhale, up, exhale, down, up, down. Inhale, exhale, up, down. Keep going. Forcing. Both inhale and exhale. Exhale completely and just natural rhythm of breathing. Oh, before that, do the bandhas. After this, also, we do the bandhas. So forcefully exhaling and then apply the bandhas. Few easy breaths. And then do the same bhastrika <clears throat> this time through one nostril at a time. We did this once, I think, right? So again, so it becomes a little more intense. So I want you to be very careful. If you feel any kind of lightheadedness or any discomfort of any kind, stop. Don't force yourself. All right, now, when I do this practice, it just automatically happens with me that I move my head up and down slightly. Feel free to do that. I mean, it just feels like I'm getting a little extra neck exercise with this movement, okay? But it's up to you. It's, a, it's an optional choice, all right? Close the right nostril. And again, forcing both inhale and exhale, all right? At your own pace. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Exhale, and just natural breath for a few moments. No bandhas after this. A few easy breaths. The other side, close your left nostril, right hand, always use the right hand, the other right hand, okay? No other, other nostril now, no right hand, yes. And again, same rhythm, <clears throat> at your own pace. <clears throat> Exhale, and this natural rhythm of breathing. Forcefully exhale, but no bandhas. This one, just relax, breathing now. Kapalabhati and Bhastrika, very beautiful, cleansing, detoxifying practices. A lot of work goes on in the body in multiple levels. Lungs are getting a lot of good exercise, all the bronchial cavity, <clears throat> the nasal passage, brain area, <clears throat> all the air passages in the lungs, improved, improved blood circulation, a lot of things are happening here. Okay, that's Bhastrika. <clears throat> Come to a standing position. A, another variation of the Bhastrika. It's called the woodcutter's breath. All right, come to a standing position. We're going to imagine as if we are cutting a, a, a kind of there is a big piece of log in front, wood log, and we are trying to slice it with a with an axe. Okay. We have a nice big axe in our hands. Take it easy. <laughs> Let your legs go to sleep. Yeah. You know that. It's very, very hard. Yeah. You can just walk around, move the legs like this. You know, feel loose and comfortable. All right. So this is the whole movement here. Let me just explain what we will do. We'll Keep these the feet slightly apart, and I want to interlock the fingers. Imagine that I have a big axe in my hand. All right, and there's a big log of wood. All right. Now, what do woodcutters do? They will move the arm up all the way, raise the axe, and then while striking the wood, make a sound. All right. <clears throat> now we are going to make a sound. It's going to be a loud sound. Okay? If you have if you have neighbors or, or the kids sleeping in the in the room uh, in next to you, close the doors or something, you know, because they might wake up. All right, it's going to be a real loud sound, and it seems funny, but that is how it is going to be. All right. So when you strike the wood, bend the knees at that point. When you're going back, the legs are straight. So this is what it's like now. Inhale, that loud. All right, everyone got that? As loud as you can make it, okay? And do this a few times. <clears throat> no, no, that's loud. Yes, that's loud. Wake up and Take your neighbors up. Come back up. 
Relax. A little laughter now. <laughs> no. As long as you can laugh. Come <laughs> on, you can laugh. <laughs> Not for your dad. Nobody is moving. That's a giggle. That's not enough. Big laughter. <laughs> not a giggle. Laugh. <laughs> one of the best exercises for the lungs, as you all know. Beautiful. Not just exercise for the lungs, but helps the mind. It releases those hormones which really help keep the mind nice and happy. Okay. So that was called, we, I just call it, it's a variation of Bhastrika, hmm. because you're forcing the breath out forcefully. I just call it the woodcutter's breath, hmm. like emulating a woodcutter. Okay. We haven't done the um, lion's breath in a while. Hmm? Can we do the lion's breath? We'll do it today. Do we'll do it today. Yeah. yeah. We'll do it. Okay. Next move now, it's called Agni Sar. Agni is fire. Sar is it has multiple meanings. It, it can also mean juice. It can mean the essence of something. Basically, igniting internal fire, that's the whole idea, and that's the name. So in this one what we do is, we uh, first of all apply the, the navel lock, so exhale forcefully, apply the navel lock as well as the chin lock, so the chin will go to the chest, will suck the belly in, and then we'll hold the breath. We, all, we have done this, holding the breath after exhalation. And then we'll soften the belly and move the belly in and out very rapidly. All right? So that's the whole movement here. Let me just, uh, I hope everyone can see me online. The, this is what it's going to be like. All right? Let me just show you the movement first. So the starting position would be, I mean, this is how we will maintain the position. The knees are bent. Hands will be on your knees. All right? At this point, I'm going to exhale forcefully and eliminate all the air, then apply the chin lock and the navel lock. The key is the navel lock, all right? Because once we suck the belly in, we're going to hold the breath and then move the belly in and out very rapidly. So just watch the movement now. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. So, uh, so basically, uh, I mean, I exhale everything, my belly goes in, and then I hold the breath and just do this. Yes. Uh, do the, the, the abdomen. So, you have to soften the belly slightly, and then move the belly in and out very rapidly, as much as you can. This may not work for everyone. In the beginning, yeah. it may not happen, mm -hmm. but that's what we will try, okay? And we'll try three rounds. So, three times, exhale forcefully, apply the navel lock, and then move the belly in and out rapidly. Again, if you want to watch the movement one more time. And do it as long as you can, okay? Do it three times, and then we'll sit down <coughs> after that. Take your time. Full movement. <clears throat> Remember, you're doing the movement when you're holding the breath. That's very important. And when you want to inhale, come back up, take a few easy long breaths. And then when you're ready, do the next two more rounds. <clears throat> Do 
it three times, and then whenever you're done, you sit down comfortable three, three times, full three times. End of that round, sit down, comfortable posture. Okay, that movement may or may not happen in the beginning, but it becomes very powerful eventually. You know, it really ignites a lot of internal heat, very good for digestion, and a lot of other benefits are associated with it. Okay. Yeah, I think the first few times it's just making that connection, like the muscle brain connection, seeing if you can control it or right. like feel it with mm -hmm. no breathing or feelings. Yeah. 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 Next time. Sit down. Sit comfortable. Yeah, when I try to move, like I initially was able to move only on the top part of the and yeah. then I was okay with it. Yeah, yeah. You can, eventually you will start feeling the movement at the very lower part of the brain. Yes. It's weird. It's not a natural feeling. <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, We've been talking about the cleansing practices, right? So we've talked about how many so far? Two. Kapalabhati. Three. Kapalabhati. Candle gazing. Candle gazing. That's Trataka. Mm -hmm. and Narik. Huh? Narik. Neti. 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 We did that Neti mm -hmm. yesterday. Neti is the nasal cleansing. Okay. Today I'm going to talk about one more practice, which is only demonstration only, because that takes a fair amount of practice to get used to it, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is called Nauli, that's the Sanskrit name, N-A-U-L-I. In English we just call it abdominal churning, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there are, there are two movements here. You start out with the same practice, the same way that we did in the Agnisar. That means you will exhale forcefully all the air, apply the navel lock and the chin lock and then you, you have this is where, where you will need a lot of practice and training you have to to learn how to to pull the middle part of the the muscles out it's called the rectus abdominis that's the name i've read rectus abdominis you pull this out suck the sides in completely okay so suck the sides in middle part goes out and there are two movements that that are normally done. One is like a, a rocking boat like movement of the abdominal area. So the, both these sides will move like this, like a rocking boat. That's one movement. And the second is the full churning. It almost seems like you're creating a rotation in the abdominal area. So I'm going to show you, like I said, this is demonstration only, because you need a lot of practice to, to develop this ability to do this. All right, so the first movement I will do is to uh, a kind of rocking boat. Okay, just watch now. Same thing, starting position is the same. Hands on the knees, you can keep the knees slightly bent and then exhale forcefully and then just watch. <clears throat> And then take a few easy breaths. If you have held the breath for a long time, then you need to take a few easy breaths. All right? So this is kind of the, like I said, rocking boat kind of a movement. Not quite exact, but roughly. Same thing with the little churning move. I'm just, you will do, obviously you will do both sides. So one, one churning you will do clockwise, other counterclockwise. I'm just going to demonstrate one, just a few rounds of one direction. All right? It looks like a churning movement, right? Just watch. It's called the Nauli Kriya.
All right? Like I said, this is something that will take a fair amount of practice. And you start with the Agni Sara. Okay? Learn how to do the Agni Sara very effectively. Agni Sara was, remember, we did the movement, belly, belly movement in and out, in and out, rapidly. Do that for a few, few weeks, maybe on a regular basis. That will help you strengthen these muscles nicely. And then you will learn the ability to pull the central part out, suck the belly, the sides in, and then do these movements like we just saw. All right? That's the Naudi, N-A-U-L-I. One of the six cleansing practices. There's a lot of work in the internal organs here. Helps. This, in the text it says it really improves your digestion, uh, clears, you know, cleanses all the internal area here. Same, same thing, works on those organs, right? Liver, pancreas, etc. All those areas. Okay. So let's do the Nadi Shuddhi. Alternate nostril breathing. See? So again, Vishnu Mudra with the right hand, Chin Mudra with the left. All right. Let's do again one or two rounds together. So I can guide you when to hold the breath, etc. So close the right nostril with the right thumb. Exhale from your left side. Inhale through the left nostril. Hold the breath, close both the nostrils. Apply the two bandhas, chin lock, root lock. Release the lock, chin up, exhale from your right nostril. Inhale through the right. Slow deep breaths, ujjayi. Hold the breath, close both nostrils, apply the chin lock and the root lock, release, chin up, exhale, left, inhale, left, hold the breath, close both nostrils, apply the two locks. Release, chin up, exhale from the left, right side and continue now. Same movement. Keep going. Few more breaths. These are deep ujjayi breaths. Remember the sound is coming with the friction at the base of the throat. That's what is causing that little hissing sound. And always that ratio of 1 to 2 is important between inhale and exhale. So maintaining a count will help. Om 1, Om 2, Om 3, Om 4, etc. Make an assessment of the relative durations of inhalation and exhalation. And see if you can make the exhalation longer. Eventually, twice as long as the inhalation. Eventually.
finish the next round. Take your time. Finish the final exhalation. You should be through the left nostril. <coughs> At the end of that full sequence, then you can release the hands. And you're breathing back to your normal rhythm of breathing. for a moment. Just a quick note for these people who have been coming here in the studio, Malikarjun, Murali and Veo. We had your mats warmed up and ready. We missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Try to, to see if we can leave a little time for some discussion at the end. I want to talk, talk about some concepts here. So let's get ready. Sit up in any posture with the eyes closed. Actually, let's do our Paschimottanas. It's a good stretch to get ready. So legs are straight in front. Point the toes back. Feet together. Raise the arms up as you inhale. Exhale. Bend forward. Let's stay there for a moment. Keep breathing as you inhale to lengthen the spine. Pull the chin away in the direction of the feet. When you exhale, you can lower the chest down. Again, the effort is to press the knees very firmly into the ground. Slide the heels away from you and Pull the toes back in towards you. Deepen the stretch. And as you inhale, raise the arms up again. Exhale, release the arms. And now we'll sit comfortable, cross that with the eyes closed. And this is our moment of reflection, reflection on our <clears throat> experience so far to deepen our awareness at the physical body level, breath level, mind level, to recognize any instance where the mind and body did not play a harmonious role together. Important, very important for us to learn how to recognize when the mind is driven by the ego, ahankara. That's when we run into all kinds of problems at all levels, physical, mental problems, emotional problems. And the ego drives the mind. Just bring the hands behind the back, softly hold the right wrist, and as you exhale, bend forward. Nice and easy move. Stay in the final position for a moment. Keep breathing. Natural rhythm of breath. smooth as you inhale, come back up, finally release the hands and legs, lie down on your back, we'll get ready for our yoga nidra experience, deep relaxation, back and as always, if you're comfortable, we'll get into the half boat, which is to lift the head up, feet up, if that's not comfortable, keep them down. But go through these movements that will help us tense the body, tighten the muscles. Stretch the legs straight, point the toes away, arms straight in front, spread the fingers wide and tight, make a fist with the hands, tight fists, and we'll do a few rotations in one direction, wrist joint. Pause, 
other direction, rotation. Let's pause here. Elbows are straight, fists are tight. Let's work on the facial muscles. So open the mouth, extend the tongue out and curl the tongue down. Eyes are open, mouth open wide, tense the facial and the neck muscles now. The fists still tight, pull the hands away from you. We'll squeeze the buttocks tight real tight, thighs, knees, kneecaps tight, calf muscles, ankles, point the toes away. One final effort now to engage every single muscle in the body, top to bottom, toes to head, every muscle engage into a real tight squeeze. And let go. Loosen up now completely. No tension, fatigue anywhere. Spread the feet apart. Almost the width of the mat. Hands away from the body. Palms facing up. All this should feel natural. No effort should be required. Begin to scan the body mentally from toes to head, one muscle, one limb at a time. And if the mind perceives any kind of tightness, fatigue or tension, mind and body work together, mind sends in a wave of relaxation, loosening up every muscle, letting go of any tension, tightness. And you start feeling that subtle heaviness of the body on the floor. Every limb begins to feel that subtle heaviness. Feel that subtle heaviness of the feet. Legs. Knees. Thighs. heaviness of the buttocks, lower back, middle back, upper back, neck muscles, hands, arms, shoulders, head. So you can feel the subtle heaviness of the whole body on the ground. Body feels heavy, also feels nicely supported by the ground. Let the body gently sink into the ground under its own subtle heaviness. It gets into a state of very deep Complete relaxation. And we'll enjoy this deep state of relaxation for a few more moments and to do that, we'll set the intention that while we relax, when we pick up any thoughts in the mind, we will not pay attention to the thoughts. Thoughts will come and go away because we are not paying attention. We are not, yet, we are not interested in thoughts. So let's continue to enjoy this very beautiful, peaceful, state of the body and the mind.
with the awareness back to the breathing and begin to breathe just slightly deeper breaths. Just become aware of the rhythm of breathing. And for a moment, just follow the flow at the tip of the nose, just to feel the flow of the, as you breathe in and out. And then slowly begin to stretch the fingers, curl the toes, stretch the hands, feet, arms and legs. And stretch the arms back overhead, give a nice stretch to the body by pulling the hands back and away, point the toes away as well. Good stretch and roll to one side for a moment now. It slowly will come back up to a sitting position. <clears throat> okay, so Today, just want to talk about a few concepts. Martin is very familiar with these. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <clears throat> to understand how uh, breath and emotions are connected, basically, you know. So if you, you know, look at our breathing, you know, take an example, you know, how, how emotions can control our breathing pattern, okay? So, uh, for example, when you are, let's say you're very super angry, okay? Very, very angry. You're really so angry you want to kill somebody or hurt somebody. How is your breath at that time? Intense. Mm -hmm. Intense, kind of. Maybe you might even hold your breath. You hold the breath, it's very uneven. You know, you are so tensed up and, and so angry. I'm going to do this. You recognize that? Breath is totally, you can call it out of whack. It's uneven, It's you can hold the breath, or it's forced, or totally uneven. Okay, no control. Now, who did that? Did we, did, did we do it consciously or it just happened? It just, it just happens. It's the emotional state of the mind that caused that breath to change completely. Okay. And the opposite of that, when you're very, very peaceful, very calm, maybe you're listening to some very, you know, peaceful music, maybe, you know, some, you know, nice piece of classical music and you're absolutely deeply engrossed in it. Your breath is very even, soft, very gentle breath at that time, right? Same thing when we are uh, at kids, you know, I'm sure you know when they, when they cry, you know, and when they, when they finish the crying and then they start sobbing, the sobbing breath, as you all know. Mm. That's the sobbing breath, right? Again, who's controlling that? It's the emotion. Automatically it happens, right? What we're trying to say is that emotions have a deep impact on our breathing pattern. One more example they always like to give is when you are trying to thread a, a needle, right? You're trying to put the thread through the needle head. Yeah. What they say is the moment the thread touches the needle head, your breath stops automatically. No control. You're not doing it consciously. The breath stops automatically and then only you can thread the needle through the needle head. It just happens. 
Okay, you can see, see that example many places. Yeah. All right. The point is, emotions control your breath. These yogis in the old days, you know, they they said, ah, we know this, but can the opposite be true? And they really found that the opposite, not only true, but very significant, very important. What's that? If the emotions can control the breath, can you use the breath to control the emotions? <laughs> and what they found is that indeed, whatever pranayama practices they developed, every one of them has some impact on the emotions. It really helps calm the mind, calm the nervous system. Emotions are controlled at that point. All right? So, you know, that's the whole, like I said, the promise of all these pranayama practices that we do that it can really help us maintain a calm mind, not get you know, swayed by all these emotional upheavals that we normally go through, all right? So this is where, you know, uh, uh, a little bit of a scientific uh, twist to this whole exp uh, explanation. You know, there's in, in, the, in the, when you read physics, Right, there is a concept called resonance. Does anybody know what resonance is? Yeah, I know it came back. So, when the sound uh, is it, this is something to do with the sound, or no, not, not just sound, sound. But resonance is a concept which relates to waves. Hmm. Any wave, oh, it could be a sound wave, it could be an electric wave, any, any wave. If there are two waves which have the same frequency, mm -hmm. see waves have two, two attributes like frequency and amplitude. Mm -hmm. if, if, you know, if you've read any bit of physics, I, I'm talking this because I had a little engineering background, right? <laughs> In my previous life, I used, to, I used to be an engineer, right? So when there are two waves which have the same frequency and they collide with each other, then resonance happens and the amplitude shoots up, right? Amplitude shoots up. Now, this, you know, I used to work for this company called at and and one of their very strong claims to fame was called echo suppression in phone conversations. In the, in the ancient times, in the old days, when the when the true when people in the army they used to communicate with each other over the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this, but they would say one person would talk and they would say over. Mm -hmm. Only then the other person would talk. So you talk and then say over, other person would talk. Right? Why was that? Because if they talk together, the same frequencies will collide and they will create resonance. There'll be a huge echo. Mm -hmm. In the early days of cell phone, echo used to be there, huge echo. Why, what, what causes that echo? Resonance. Two, two waves, of, in that case, sound waves. They collide and their amplitude shoots up. An example that Martin always you know, has been sharing with us, it's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's the fact that when, when, when a military troop Mm -hmm. is walking across a bridge, they are asked to break step. They are not supposed to walk in step. Marching troops normally walk in step, left, right, left, right, you know, but they're supposed to break step. Why? What they claim is that if they walk in step and the vibration Okay, of their of their movement of the steps, the frequency of that vibration matches the natural frequency of the bridge. A resonance will happen; bridge can collapse. There are actual instances in history where two bridges have actually collapsed: one in Britain and one in France. That's what I've read. Actually, mm -hmm. military troops walking across the bridge they collapse. So there's a there's a sign. Uh, I couldn't find that picture. Martin shared it with me. 
many, many years ago, almost 12, 10, 12 years ago, you know, where there is a sign in front of a bridge in London which says same thing. If, if military personnel are walking through the bridge, across the bridge, break step, don't walk in step. The actual, there is a sign even today on that bridge. <clears throat> All right. So now the question is, why are we talking about all this science and the resonance and all that? We are in the we are doing a course on pranayama. So what does resonance have to do with pranayama? Can anybody guess? Yeah, breathing have to be in the kind of pace. You know, it helps you go steady. How does it happen? You control the breathing. Control the breathing. So we have, when we breathe in a controlled rhythmic manner, it creates waves, right? It creates vibrations. Vibration means waves, right? Now, guess what? Every, you know, what did Einstein say? Everything is waveform, right? Einstein said everything is waves, right? We all know that. <clears throat> Every thought is a wave pattern. There are millions and billions of neurons in the brain. They're all connected in certain network. And they say every emotion, emotion of happiness, emotion of anger, jealousy, everything is, is represented by a wave, by a network pattern in the neurons in the, in the brain. <clears throat> and every network has a wave pattern. All right? An emotion of of anger, for example, represent a certain wave pattern, certain frequency, certain you know network, and that network vibrates at that wave pattern, right? <laughs> Every emotion, anger, jealousy, hatred, greed, anxiety, whatever you call it, love, anything, everything has a pattern, right? Wave pattern. When we breathe in and out, in a certain rhythmic manner, whether it is slow or fast, we do all kinds of breathing. It has a wave pattern. Now, there's a possibility that these two waves have the same frequency. Mm -hmm. When that happens, the resonance happens. What does that do? It can break that pattern. It can vibrate so violently that that pattern gets broken. Once the pattern is broken, any trigger will not excite you anymore. That network will not get excited. Okay, if somebody says you're ugly, right, you would have gotten angry in the past, but now that pattern is not there anymore through all these practices that we do. So when somebody says you're ugly, ha <laughs> ha, okay, well, it's fine, thank you. <laughs> you have no, no impact on that. You, are, you will stop getting angry, jealous, you know, all those things will happen. So we have been able to use the practice of pranayama to control our emotional outbursts, basically, because of this resonance phenomenon, which happens in our mind, in our brain, in our networks, neuro, neurological networks, and start feeling calm. Start feeling quiet, peaceful, happy. So if anybody is interested in that, not getting explosive emotional outbursts, something that you can do, it's called pranayama. All right? You get the idea? All right. Let's close the eyes, sit up comfortable, do <clears throat> our closing sequence. Very comfortable posture with the eyes closed, spine tall and vertical. Hands very comfortably resting on your knees or thighs, shoulders loose. Let's recite OM <laughs> once now, deep inhalation. Oh. Shanti.
palms together now for the Shanti Mantra. <coughs> Inhale. <coughs> Lead me from unreal to the real, darkness to light, from the fear of death to the knowledge of immortality. Peace, peace, peace. Bombs. Cover the eyes softly with the palms, relaxing the eyes. <laughs> Raise the hands, join the palms again, raise them up. And then, and then as you exhale, bend forward. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. I bow down to all my gurus, my teachers. I would like to pay a very, very special tribute to our Guru Patanjali. Slowly come back up. Thank you all. Namaste, have a wonderful